Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Books and Bullshit, where the topics are made up and your opinions don't matter. Yes, always inappropriate, rarely researched, never sorry. Absolutely. Today's episode is brought to you by a dog <laughs> running around. With a black Two rats dog. fucking in a wool sock. <laughs> Pretty much. Would you by any chance grab that plastic bag from your damn dog? <laughs> well, Where is he? He's, he's always right behind me where I can't oh see him. God, this is the dog shit. <laughs> okay, guys. We normally try to have these things start with some structure because we're trying to sound like professionals. We got three dogs in here. Two of them, I'm pretty sure, are broken and one of them literally is broken wearing a cone of shame so we're getting lots of groans moans and smells sing me the song of your people please i'm only trying to record oh yeah this is gonna be a clusterfuck so just buckle up (laughs) for the uh for those of you that don't know i am zachary chopchinsky the bowtie author author of the gabrielle series and the hall of doors series the high-pitched whining is my dog levy don't even say hi he's deaf I'm Martina McAtee, the author of the Dead Thing series, and that's all I have got. I am a one-trick pony at the moment. Wow. At least least you're pulling tricks. Gotta make a living somehow. (laughs) (laughs) Certainly not making it off my book sales. (laughs) Oh, oh, Zach, lamp! God damn it! Oh, God. No, stop! (laughs) Chance you're gonna kill all of us. Charlie! Charlie, I don't fucking know your name. You're not my dog. We just met. You're cute, but you're dumb. (laughs) As are all my animals. Ours too. And <laughs> you had to pet him because his face is so pitiful. I can't knock <laughs> you little motherfucker. Am I, every time he not, almost knocks over the lamp, I yell at him, feel bad, and then I pet him. I'm starting to think I classically conditioned him. And now he's like, if I almost knock this shit over, I'm going to get pets. Yes. He's going to break all of your shit. I know. Well, normally I don't keep him in one small room, but if I put him out there, he's going to be sad because your dog is in here. I have to, like... (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Curtains, you getting that? You getting the dog grown? She's checked out. She's done. She's so done with our shit. That's uh, that's our deaf dog. And funny thing is, he was born deaf, so he kind of sounds like a flailing seal (laughs) when he makes dog noises. He doesn't really make... He doesn't really do dog well. He does Chewbacca, though. He does an excellent Chewbacca impression. In that high pitch, like, I feel like there's reverb in the mics, but nope, that's just my dumbass dog. And my other little dog is trying to screw your dog. Ah, this is anarchy in here. <laughs> it's okay. fucking chaos. So today's subject, Martina, what are we talking about today? Today we are going to talk about author scandals, which was... <laughs> <laughs> which was a... Subject, I sort of put a pin in. We weren't going to do it, but then a new author scandal popped up. And so now I feel like we should just talk about all the ones that were mentioned on our Facebook group, Books and Bullshit Podcast on Facebook. Yep. Dude, shut up. And just let's get into it. Let's talk some shit about some authors we don't know. Yep. I mean, and here's the deal, guys. Like, we've we mentioned it before in previous podcasts, and the, the, really? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> You're next to my mic. He's like a siren going off. Aww. Just for the record, Zach just struck his deaf, wounded dog. Wearing the cone of shame. I didn't strike him like I beat him. (laughs) I made him aware that, dude, you're whistling again. This is all just audio recording. It's whatever I say it is. (laughs) Unfortunately, with him, because he makes such weird noises, he doesn't know he's doing it. So he's very touch-based by command. And he talks shit. <laughs> and he is done with Zach's shit. Um, so we've talked about it in the past, but on this podcast, Martina and I will spill the tea and we will talk the shit. We don't care. We're going to tell you the truth as we see it. Mostly because we don't make the news. We just report it. Like, it's already out there. We're just yeah. taking it from the internet and bringing it to you. Where legitimate news sources have already done all the research, we just read it off of a screen because we don't want to do the research ourselves. And the other thing is, is, is you know, indie, the indie book world is terrifying. And you have to have some confidence when you get into it. And there's a lot of thing, bullshittery that happens, like any industry. And I think that some people, because of how difficult it is and how much you rely on yourself, did the dog shit himself again, Martina. Oh, it was the worst. Oh, it was so bad. Oh, it's still there. All of a sudden, Martina's eyes start welling and she covers her mouth with her shirt. Oh, the V. Oh, you sick fuck. 
Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I think it's in my nose forever now. God, decomp smells weird. Like, less bad. I think something died in his ass. Oh, God. Damn. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. So here's a dizzle. I am a professional. I will shake yeah. this off. Come on, T-Swift. You got this. <sighs> so, um, it's... <laughs> Dude, shut up. <laughs> so anyway, so but so a lot of people don't really necessarily have that confidence that they want to burn that bridge because in the indie world, you're on your own, right? Um, or you're at the whim of the community and those that support you. So but Martina and I... We'll fucking call that shit as it is, so... Because we're not really famous, and so it doesn't matter for folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we, we're just going to burn this bridge, so we don't care. Somebody's got to say it. So, Martina, I feel like because you had a pin in it, and then you pulled the pin, and now we're throwing the grenade, you got some you got some soup, some tea to spill, so what is Yeah, it? so, like I said, I wasn't going to touch this topic, but I guess two days ago, a Bustle article came out about an author... And if you're if you're an author, you know this story, because, because every one of us has wanted to do this, but we haven't done it. Uh, <laughs> not that none of us have wanted to do that, especially on air. I don't know what that was. We I'm not sure what end that came out. Of. <laughs> but that was a little frightening. So, <clears throat> bustle article. Uh, two, no, 2014, there, there was a story that author Catherine Hale, yes, I'm using her name because, again, it's a fucking international news story. Catherine Hale um, stalked a reviewer who gave her one star on Goodreads. And she went to extreme lengths to do it. In a way, it's sort of impressive. But she basically started out stalking their social media and then she transitioned into paying money to find all of the dirt from the internet, as you can if you pay like just a small fee. They'll give you a whole report on all the stuff that they should not be able to just sell to the random public, like where you live, what your phone number is, sometimes even your social security address. Social security, security address? <laughs> number. Number. I need, number. To, I need to pay that company to find out what the hell that is for me. I don't know my social security address. <laughs> You're going to go, go fuck yourself. You You're don't fine. know any of this. I'm doing all the heavy lifting here. I'm just saying I'm here to cheer you on. No, you're not. You're here to fucking mock me. Yes. Yes, I am. I just do it better. Wow. So yeah. she then, I guess, went to a reading group and said that she wanted to offer them paperbacks of her YA book um, called No One Else Can Have You. Doesn't Stalker sound stalkery at all. Um, and got the address of said blogger to supposedly give them a, co- a copy of her book. Even tried to get them to meet with her at one point. This is all 100% illegal i just want that on the record this is very illegal and also immoral and probably fattening just don't do it probably fattening (laughs) do we know what state this took place in well she lives in wisconsin you know them crazy midwesterners but where did she do the actual like where did the reader i don't know where the reader lived it didn't actually say but um so that was 2014 and i'm pretty sure most of us thought that this had all sort of died down and it was done. But how do you respond in the literary world if a author stalks a fucking reader? Apparently you offer them a book deal. So now Catherine Hale has released a book called Catherine Hale is a Crazy Stalker. And it's six essays about her stalking this reader. I have so many problems with this, not the least of which is like, what the fuck? I'm sorry. We, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've never tried to be tripod, but like, 
there are so many people struggling out there to fucking get a book deal that are amazing writers. And this fucking twat gets a one star review and then goes completely off the rails psycho and gets a book deal. Do you know why? Because fucking press sells and there's no press. There's no such thing as bad press. Oh, I know. And the publishing company was like, we just encourage you to read the successes and before you draw. Right. So we can give you our money first and then decide that she's a twat. No, I like to just go completely. Granted, it it depends upon what state it took place in. But if she did this in her own home state, which could be viable because, you know, whatever. I just looked up the Wisconsin state legislature on stalking laws. It is a criminal offense there. And it includes things such as trying to obtain their personal information, going to their home or workplace, repeatedly contacting known associates. Um, All things she did. Yeah, which which is a criminal offense in the state of Wisconsin. I just, I don't understand this whole new trend of rewarding bad behavior. I don't get it. It's, maybe it's not even a new trend and I just never noticed it before, but just, we're just sending a message to other authors. I mean, we, we've all been there. We've all gotten that review where we just find our friend online and just be like, oh my God, I'm going to fucking find this bitch and I'm going to go online and I'm going to tell her that she just didn't understand the nuance of my fucking story. And this was a metaphor. And da 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 because we all have egos and we get it and we're all kind of narcissists. It, but it's but I, I'll be honest, uh, that's why I got some diehard fans that I'll sick them on the like, you know, oh hey, this kind of happened and then I'm to- you're totally separated but you die your rider dies will take care of that for you. Okay, that's also not what we're supposed to be doing. I mean, I don't ask them to do it, but I'm just saying it's really yeah, therapeutic when they do it. But it's sort of like, you know, the guy on Infowars being like, "Oh, you should shoot all liberals. And then like they all go out and shoot liberals. And then he's like, well, I didn't do it myself. I wasn't holding the gun. Like, like I mean, really, like we're Manson. not supposed to, we're not supposed to incite our fans to defend us. As a matter of fact, that's actually another author scandal on here. Is, oh, shit. Not yeah. Right. Oh, but, no. but can I say, though, real quick, the best part about some of these, again, taking these things in stride as an adult, I want you guys to understand something that I Zachary actually, is not an adult. I had one review, and it's still hilarious the more I think about it. I do not agree with nor condone mansplaining. First off, I think that Even anybody, though you did it in the last episode. Anybody can quote mansplain. I think it's just explaining something and being a derogatory asshole about it, but... Which is just, it doesn't matter if you're a man or woman, that's a dickhead thing to do. But I actually had a guy literally, quote, mansplain to me, thinking that I was a woman, about how one of my characters wearing corsets, it's so, un, it's so un, un, like, unbelievable, and they're doing all these things. And I had all these other women commenting to me, like, that that's not true. I wear corsets all the time. You can totally, like, move. It's not like a casket around your chest. It's just so funny about having to take that in stride that some dude tried to explain to me thinking I was a woman about corsets. And I'm like, you, there's so much fucked up where you should shut your mouth. I right had now. a woman say that the sex scene in book one was so inappropriate for children. <laughs> Spoiler alert. There's no sex in my first book at all. Maybe one or two semi like not even heavy makeout scenes. There's really nothing other than the fact that two dudes kissed in my book, which I think is what she really had a problem with. But, I think, oh, she probably yeah. got to that scene and assumed it was going to go to sex and then stopped reading, but bitch. But yeah, she totally was like, oh, the sex in that book is inappropriate, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, there is no sex in my book. But I was just like, okay, fine, whatever, fuck you. There's no sex in my book, but I don't care. And I did care. So I went and I bitched to my friends on social media privately, and I just moved on. With another ding to my fucking ego. But you can't weaponize your fans. Like, yes. so... <clears throat> as much as I was saying I like it when it happens, I honestly have never intentionally done it, but it is when somebody... basically It's when validating. Def- and when somebody defends you, yes. like, no, they missed it. It's when somebody picks up on the nuances that they may have missed. It's validating. It makes right. you feel good. And now Amazon does not allow you to dislike comments, so there's really not much you can do about bad reviews. Can you still flag them as unhelpful? Nope. Wow, that's fucking dumb. Yeah, you could flag it as helpful, but not unhelpful. So I don't really know why that is, other than authors weaponizing their groups. <laughs> but, I mean, don't get me wrong. I will go and I will put something on there that's like, woe is me, feed my ego, I'm an attention whore. And they'll be like, oh, no, we love your books. Oh, they're amazing. And then I feel somewhat validated, and then I can actually not kill myself. But Wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> but the truth is, is like, it should only go that far. It should only stay in your group. Like it shouldn't ever leave your inner circle, however large that circle is. Um, one of the authors that somebody, I'm going to put this entirely on somebody else, yeah. <laughs> but somebody brought up Cassandra Clare as being problematic in the author world. This is not a secret. Anybody who has Tumblr, when you reach a level of fame where you have what they call an anti Cassandra Clare tag, you sort of hit like peak fame. Like she's fine. Cassandra Clare doesn't give a fucking rat's dick about us talking about her because she's too busy, like, fucking blowing her nose with $100 bills. She's not yeah. even in the same stratosphere we, as we us. We make no mistake. We are well aware of our station presence. Yeah, we we know that we are at the bottom. Yeah. Way, way down. Maybe even the sub-basement level at this point. I mean, if you guys support our Patreon, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe we can move to the basement level <laughs> instead of the sub-basement. Yeah, uh, we're just trying to get or to Or buy our books. Fuck, for the love of God. Just Somebody please dear God help, buy my books. Help us. Help us. They're good. I promise you'll like them. Yeah. Uh, my, mine have pictures in them. I, I have a pretty high star rating. <laughs> yeah, so do I. <laughs> I've been international bestseller a few times. People like me. <laughs> I'm going places. <laughs> You'll see. I'll eventually hit a floor with a number and not a letter. Right? <laughs> okay, so um, somebody brought up that uh, supposedly Cassandra Clare only writes a first draft. She never, ever, ever goes back and reads her own books that she gives it to editors and then never sees it again. Who does that? I don't know. That's fucking insane to me. I swear. I read every chapter like 600 times till my eyes bleed. I can't imagine anybody ever just putting a rough draft to an editor. What? Why are you you too... Cassandra Clare. Um, Supposedly, also, her uncle is on the selection board uh, for the publishing company that picked her up. And that... Oh... No, her her uncle is on the selection board for the New York Times list because it's a curated list, yep. and that's why her book uh, suppose, supposedly got picked. I don't know any of that. What I do know is that no, she's notorious on Twitter for sicking her fans on people who disagree with her or say that her books are bad. She also, when Shadowhunters came out, they did not offer her an executive producer or a consultant position. So she proceeded to basically trash the show until they did <laughs> and had her fans do the same. She also was sued by Sherilyn Kenyon, who was a very big urban fantasy writer for a long time. She still writes books, but they're in two different genres. So mm-hmm. Cassandra Clare's YA and then Sherilyn Kenyon is um, urban. I think it's like more urban fantasy slash paranormal. And I used to read her stuff when I was in high school. But she really coined the term shadow hunter and it was copywritten. So she sued Cassandra Clare and then won. And Cassandra Clare was supposedly only allowed to use it not as like a main context. You know, it had to be something said in passing versus something that became a huge thing. Like you can't name your next book Shadow Hunter because. No, but apparently you can name your show Shadow Hunters. So I'm curious to see how that's playing out somewhere in a back room. Um, unless oh, it, it has to be because unless the CW went to Sherilyn Kenyon well, and offered her a big fat fucking yeah, check, somebody's going to have to pay her because that, that, right. that case is standing across any intellectual property relating. Correct. To so she did win that. Um, also, there was, I guess, another suit where they showed side by side paragraphs from Cassandra Clare books and Sher- uh, I want to say Sherilyn Kenyon, but it could be a different author. And the paragraphs were almost identical. So then she got hit with like a plagiarism lawsuit, which I think she won or never went to court. Um, Which means out of court settlement. Yeah. Uh, Also, she, when she, back in the day, because Cassandra Clare, little known fact, started writing Harry Potter fan fiction way before she ever got a book deal. She was a Harry Potter fan fiction writer. And she had a really nice Nice. little um, fan base, enough to where it actually got her noticed. Like, from higher up people and it kind of gave her a little bit of a big head about it. And she started getting very territorial and even outed a 13 year old girl to her parents for writing erotic Harry Potter porn because she was mad that the girl made her like said something to her. Like this is a grown woman going to a 13 year old girl's parents with beef on the internet. 
<laughs> like these sort of behaviors, if they're true, I am, I don't know personally that they are, but again, if you check the anti Cassandra Claire tag, there's some pretty spectacular proof on there. I don't get in, in any industry. I, I understand with some with like hip hop, for example, when, when you, yeah, where where having beef with somebody can help both their careers. Co- correct. I don't understand beef in beef in an industry, especially in the author community. Um, I, I will I will fully say that I understand competition a little bit, but it should always be friendly because this is something where it, it's like saying an, a, one artist is better than another. Like like oh you know Picasso is better than Monet or whatever. Like no, they're they're their own thing and people appreciate different parts of it. Beefing especially in the author world really pisses me off. And I see it happening, but I'm one of those guys where I'm unfortunate where I tend to people tend to like me as far as that. Like I don't I don't rub people where they want to be angry with me necessarily. Um, yet. <laughs> yeah, that would be illegal. You're not supposed to rub people where they'd want to be angry with you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Never rub people without their permission. <laughs> Damn. All Qu- right. So. Clear consent. That's what we're about on this show. I gotta I gotta set that up then. All right. <laughs> No, food for thought notes for later yeah. um, but I, I just don't fucking get it like why that's such a petty ass thing to do like we all got enough shit to worry about yeah and I mean maybe it's just because we haven't gotten famous yet maybe we'll turn into True. narcissistic dicks later I want to get we're... so book famous where I can like live like a 90s rap star I want to get so famous that I don't even hear the shit people talk about me on Twitter <laughs> that's the fame I want to reach where there's so many people between me and the real world I can no longer be harmed but the mean things people say about me. I just want to be able to wear white everywhere. That's never going to happen. The curtains will never allow it. I mean, it's like just like white jeans and tennis shoes and oversized t-shirts with like a big chain. And just like walk into rooms, pop a bottle. I'm not going to drink it. I'm just going to set it down and then leave. Like, I just want to be able to do that because fuck it, why not? Because that's dumb. I mean, I saw one Jay-Z music video, I feel like, in 99. And that's pretty much what stuck with me. Okay, and on that note, let's go to the board. (laughs) So the other scandal that was brought up um, by Elizabeth was the Tomi Adeyemi versus Nora Roberts scandal that hit Tomi Adeyemi. Okay, the bookshelf is floating. Okay, (laughs) she's a Nigerian author. That's the name she was given. Let's not go there. Wow. Now I'm the asshole. (laughs) It's like the real name for Cardi B is insane. Yeah. I mean, I'm one to talk. I have the most Polacky Polish last name ever. That is That had to be changed the spelling when they came to the States. Because really my last name is spelled C-Z-E-P-C-Z-Y-N-S-K-I. But it's pronounced... Now the bookshelf is floating. Right? (laughs) It's spelled like Wingardium Leviosa. I don't get it. It's Leviosa. (laughs) <laughs> so, all right, Hermione, we get it. Anyway, so I, I mean, I kind of got beef with her anyway because nobody talks about hashtag NR. Truth. <laughs> Nobody's ever gonna defame somebody Zach jerked off to. Damn right. No, Roberts, you got shooters in them streets in more ways than one, really, <laughs> if you think about it. And also in the sheets. <laughs> shooters in the streets and shooters in the sheets. You need to make wipeable dust covers for your books like the hard plastic ones it's like because i'm tired of having like i get nora's getting my money when i have to buy new books but i feel like you can't even recycle them at that point because they're like fiberglass when i get done with them i think i just threw up a little bit in my mouth just saying okay you, nora you made a man out of me so <laughs> we all thank you for that nora sort of um okay so the scandal was that I'm already tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tomi Adeyemi uh, put a tweet up that basically showed Nora Roberts' book next to hers and implied that Nora Roberts was attempting to ride her coattails because she'd had such a huge hit with her book a year ago. Maybe less than a year. Uh, <laughs> The dog understands. Yeah, he's he's tired too. He's just he's, he's been he's through a so lot tired. He's been through so model. much, um, and basically Twitter exploded, and it became Team Nora slash Team Tommy. Is that like Team Jacob and Team Edward? Pretty much. So they're all douches, by the way. I want you guys to know that. 
Jacob and Edward? Okay, because I was like, you just said you loved Nora. No. <laughs> she is not a douchebag, don't you dare. So then people, like, basically Tomi Adeyemi's fans came at Nora Roberts, like, you're stealing her title, trying to make a name for yourself. Wait to a which, oh no, they did, because here's the thing. You have to understand a lot of this has to do with generational. Oh, I was gonna say because fucking millennials. <laughs> well, eh. So, you know, Tomi Adeyemi writes YA books. Nora Roberts writes romance slash romantic suspense slash just thrillers slash historical. Nora Roberts writes every genre every time. She's written like 300 books. She's a fucking goddess. Um, so I think a lot of this had to do with like, you're dealing with kids who are barely 25 years old and Nora Roberts, who's been writing books for 30 years and is not even in their stratosphere because it's not what they read. Oh no, growing up, my grandmother read it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. My like, grandmother read it. My mom she, read Nora Roberts, my sister, game, like, me. Since the nineties, as far yeah. back as I can remember. She fucking puts out books, man. She's a fucking beast. She's a machine. And her books are all fucking amazing. She writes yeah. fantastic books that are not formulaic at all, which I love. Everything she writes is something completely different than the last thing she put out, unless it's a series. But that's another thing. So then Nora Roberts, in the classiest fucking move ever, basically wrote a blog post not naming names and was just like, you know, really maybe think before you just go and blurt something out on Twitter. Maybe stop for a second and do some research and know what you're talking about. My book was named way before your book was even published. You know, as most published trad pub people do, you put the, you submit your book for publishing over a year before it ever sees the light of day. And usually by then the cover art and it's like and the the book the picture she put up was a promo that actually released before Tomi Adeyemi's book was published. They squashed it, apparently. But here's the thing. Tomi Adeyemi's apology, not apology, was sort of, like, so lukewarm that it actually seemed to infuriate people more than her original post. Because she said, Nora came to me and explained everything, so we're good now, to that effect. Kind of, oh. Kind of like... We all like, know how Like, that Nora had to come to me because I'm the, I'm the bigger star or whatever. And maybe that's not what she meant. Maybe it is. Maybe it was just like one of those like sub fuck yous. I don't really know. No, that was some passive aggressive. Yeah. Bullshit. So like to me, it's like if you're going to bother to apologize, fucking apologize. Oh, and if not, just keep say. your mouth shut. Yeah. Yeah. Like say like like uh, um, the curtains, a.k.a. my wife, Layla, um, her dad has a really good phrase, which is um, say what you mean, do what you say. Yeah. And it's the same thing. Like, be a fucking human about it. And. <clears throat> And so to God damn you dog. This is dog shit himself again. <laughs> I'm fucking woozy over here. I'm we like have a losing our car drive home with that guy. That's how we felt coming back from fucking PenCon with you. Zach. You guys know I'm lactose intolerant and you fed me cheeseburgers. That is your fault. You fed yourself cheeseburgers, you, you angry guys bitch. Me. I'm get I get angry when I'm hungry. Yes, we know. And we suffer. That makes it sound like you beat us. <laughs> Instead of Damn. just whine like the devilicious little bitch you are. I'm too devilicious for you, babe. So yeah, there was that was that scandal, which it 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 still kind of lingered there for a while. Some of them show up and then get squashed immediately. But I will say that if you're an author, Twitter is the fucking wild west. It's sort of like Goodreads. Like there's no filters. There's nobody. Nobody's watching this shit. Right. Well, everybody's watching this shit, but nobody's monitoring this shit. That's there's no, me. there's no bullshit meter. There's no, like, it's really just somebody like popping off and then everybody either running over there and piling on or people coming up and just like, just burying them in just negativity well and there's like such an age gap with this you know i remember hearing one thing and you're talking about like the age gap and like you know everybody's like oh fucking millennials even though technically i'm 30 and i am one you are a millennial um but it's like um when i think it was jay-z did a song and he did like music and stuff like that in a collaboration with paul mccartney and it blew up because somebody said i don't know who this paul mccartney guy is but his career about to blow up thanks to jay-z and i'm sitting here like 
Are you fucking kidding me? But the, the thing about that is, is that Paul McCartney is, is like, I think, Nora Roberts. He probably would have just chuckled and just been like, that's, that's cute, and moved on. But, but if that shit had gone to Twitter... It would have been like the fucking Hatfields well, and some, the McCoys. Somebody tweeted that. Oh, they did? Yes, that's where it came from. And I don't know about that, like how it broke down. Yeah. I just know it was in a lot of fail, like fail posts and like memes and stuff. People were like, are you fucking serious? Yeah, like Paul seriously? McCartney's bigger than Jay-Z will ever be. Thanks for playing. Yeah, like Paul McCartney's fucking Paul McCartney. Like the man is like is a legend. It's, but that's the thing. It's like respect your elders more than anything. That's what I think. People pave the way for you to do what you do now. Like. Just just stop and think before you maybe go shitting like the on somebody. Eminem, Machine Gun Kelly beef. It's like Machine yeah. Gun Kelly, you're Eminem, 20 years old. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you're the you're this age as Eminem. Don't sit there and start beef with him because, right. frankly, I'm sorry, M's going to shred you. But not only that, I think, like, but that's the thing. Again, you go to rap, and a lot of this is very... It's very planned. It's very... Mm-hmm. It's, it's executed as a PR move. And... Either by Machine, Gelli- Kel- Machine Gun Kelly's people or in a collaboration with Eminem, like they both knew. But because it started with beef over Eminem's daughter, I think very much this was a, was Machine Gun Kelly popping off and trying to ride Eminem's coattails versus Eminem and him getting together and being like, oh, this would be great. Well, yeah. Had he not fucking talked shit about Eminem's underage daughter at the time... I think that I could I could get behind it being more like a collaboration, like a planned kind of like beef with well, each and other. And he drops that thing, like, but basically he commented on a picture of Eminem's daughter in a tweet and said, "Yo, no disrespect, but Haley's hot as fuck." Hashtag M is the M is the king and all this other shit. But Eminem and he and then he's like, "I didn't know he was going to get so defensive." And I'm like, "You," because in his early career, Machine Gun Kelly idolized Eminem. Talk about you know he set the way. Now he's falling. It's like. You cannot sit there and tell me that you did not know that that man was going to rip your fucking head off when you spoke about Haley. It's his daughter. He's dropped I'm albums sorry. butchering people over that yeah, shit. It's his fucking daughter. Come on. Like, give me a break. Like, don't don't act like you didn't know, like, that was going to come off as disrespectful. And if you didn't, you're a fucking moron. Well, the best part is, and I like, you know, and I know this is the bullshit part, is... I love when the modern day mumble rappers start beef with '90s and early 2000s rappers. Like they're, they're starting beef with like Eminem and Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and Ludacris was a recent one with Takashi Six Nine started beef with Ludacris, and it's like you guys realize you fucked up, right? Yeah, because these guys are lyricists. You're just some like pop figure. Right. Even if you're talking shit, we can't understand what you're fucking saying. I know, <laughs> and I'm sorry, but those guys. Like, I'm sorry, mumble rap. I don't. I'm not sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. I fucking can't stand mumble rap. I don't know what you're saying. I'm old now. My ears don't work as well. You gotta enunciate, motherfuckers. Yeah, I, I w- want to appreciate your fucking lame ass same words said five words said over and over again too. But I can't because I don't understand what the fuck you're saying. I grew up, I think, in the best generation because I grew up literally with Tupac and Biggie. You got Eminem. You got Dr. Dre. You got Snoop Dogg. You got Ludacris. Like those guys could literally. I had run pieces. DMC. <laughs> And that's still good, though. <laughs> I'm just saying. I had the Beastie Boys and Run DMC. <laughs> but they were good. Oh, and N.W.A. Ooh, oh, N.W.A. N.W.A. Um, oh, 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 uh, uh, da, 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 da. the Wu-Tang Clan. They ain't nothing to fuck with. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the deal, right? Is I think that that was it. Like, that, like the 90s was legit the last generation of legit gangster rap. Because you had Tupac, Biggie, N.W.A. You had, which I know there's a lot of beef with that about they weren't real gangsters. And I get that. Believe me, I know all about that beef. Um, you have the Wu-Tang Clan. You have these guys that were real, like, thugged out gangster types. But then when Pac and Biggie got killed and their crew started warring, everybody was like, oh, shit, these guys are real gangsters and they're not yeah. fucking around. They talked about that on that Nat Geo special I was watching about how they don't, like, certain people did not understand that these were real gangs that were actually involved in gang activities and it wasn't just like a cool fashion statement. Like the Crips and the Bloods were a very real thing. They were very much like at war with each other. And they didn't, as a matter of fact, they had Vanilla Ice on there because um, it was Vanilla Ice. You where mean the, Robert Van Winkle? Hey, don't talk shit about Robbie. He lives in my backyard, man. Robbie Van Winkle literally lives in Port St. Lucie. He's around the corner from me. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> He's got llamas. Okay, well, okay, a little bit of points for me, then. Yeah, he's got llamas. Okay, so he was on the special, and they were talking about how Ice Ice Baby blew up, but he wasn't... One, I will say in his defense, 
it was all PR that made him decide, you know, be like, oh, you're a rapper, you're white, like, you know, like, you're a gangster. And he's like, I'm a rich white kid from Texas. I want to listen, I want to, like, screamo punk music. And they're like, oh, no, that's not what's selling right now, kid. You know, so they kind of, like, put him through the machine, made him look ridiculous, but super hot. Holy shit, I forgot how hot Vanilla Ice was back in the day. I was like, oh, wow, he fucking cut glass with those cheekbones. That jawline? Fucking Abercrombie would have eat that shit up. He could. He didn't even have to. He could have just been an Abercrombie model. Well, that was like Marky Mark was. He became a fucking Calvin, Calvin Klein, Klein model. model. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that was what you did back in the day. You put out a rap song, then you took your fucking pants off. <laughs> well, that's how because his pants were always hanging off his ass. And yeah. Supposedly that's the thing. Is yeah, he was and he was time, always wearing the Calvin Klein. Yeah, they strapped with the Calvin Klein. And Calvin, you don't have to say approached. supposedly. I was there. I know. It was well, no, I'm saying, I don't know if that's ass. how like actually how it happened. No, it really is how it happened. He always had his pants sagged, and he had the Calvin Klein boxer briefs. Yeah. <laughs> and he just looked hot, and Calvin Klein was like, why aren't we fucking taking advantage of this? This guy's already famous. This is a win-win. Yeah, and, he, and Marky Mark was like, you're damn right. <laughs> like, I'll take that check. Um, so he was talking about how he had no idea when his song blew up that he was about to like basically walk into the middle of a fucking war because um, Suge Knight... Oh... Basically, do you remember, I don't know if you're old enough to remember this, but there was a story about Suge Knight hanging somebody over the railing of his hotel and forcing him to sign a contract. Vanilla Ice is supposedly the person that that story was about, but it never actually happened. What happened was Suge Knight basically took him up to the balcony of his hotel room and Vanilla Ice said it like this. He goes... If Suge Knight says you're going to sign over the rights to your song, he's like, you sign over the rights to your song. He's like, I wasn't prepared for any of that. He's like, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm like a rich white kid from Texas. Like, I'm not going to fucking get in the middle of that beef. He's like, you told me to sign the papers. I signed the fucking papers. And Suge Knight ran deep with Tupac, too. Right. And so then it was like Suge Knight had beef with uh, Biggie Smalls. And the East Coast crew. Yeah. And like Tupac and, and Suge Knight were like – Besties, <laughs> they were they were together. Then I talked. Pac was shot and killed. Correct. They were in the so, car. Shug was driving the car. So then, like then there was the whole like Tupac got shot. Then Biggie Smalls got Biggie Smalls got shot second. Correct. Like Biggie Smalls got yeah yeah because they said correct. Biggie shot Tupac. Tupac got like or his, yeah, his and then Tupac's crew Biggie, yeah. took out Biggie. And then that in and of itself, fuck. If you can find the the documentary about like how it was supposedly a cop who shot Tupac and all this stuff, that shit, that whole conspiracy shit runs deep. It's fucking great. This has nothing to do with books, so I'm gonna bring this back around. I was just but thinking, dude, like, you should 100. percent This this was this was what the bullshit portion that we were talking about. We tend to wander. We're prone to wandering, but I'm gonna bring it back around because we started talking about Twitter, and somebody brought up um, Molly brought up the Black Witch um, racism scandal, which is not what you think based on the title, but it is sort of. So um, a YA book came was coming out. It hadn't released yet. And it was called um, The Black Witch. And immediately, somebody got a pre, uh, like an ARC copy, an advanced reader copy, a blogger on Twitter. And she read it, and some of it to her came across as like very racist and entitled. And she posted screenshots of like the sort of ingrained racism involved in it. And it was nothing to do with like, race as far as black versus white versus was it was it was it really racist was it one of those you notice in this scene when this person sneezed over a cup of coffee that's a stereotypical thing of the oppression of like it was it was more like okay this this group of people is supposed to be black people this group of people is supposed to be white people they're suppressing these people and the things that she says basically it started out because the character the main character was not supposedly a likable character and sometimes those are the best ones. Right. I I read little snippets and out of context I could see what they were talking about. But again, fucking just calm down. First off, it's a series, so you don't know if that's the whole arc of the story. Maybe she starts off as an unlikable racist twat and becomes a likable non-racist twat. I don't know. I didn't write the book, but I'm saying maybe give it a shot and don't ruin somebody's career before their book is published. But ex- that's exactly what happened. The girl Or you can started... do what you're supposed to do with an ARC and give constructive feedback. Correct. So she screenshotted a bunch of stuff. 
it got picked up by other YA Twitter people and then it just started and the machine started and then it just became this whole blown up thing. They were asking, um, I think it was Harper Collins. They were asking them not to publish it, take it down, saying it was racist and just, it, it blew up so much over one person's opinion and a hot button topic. And I don't think people get like, or maybe they do. Maybe they like the power of being able to hit a button and cause chaos and strife. But these are there are real people can, on the other can end I of this. Can I just flaunt my ass for a second? Because you want to flaunt your ass? No. Oh yeah, because the curtains knows when I get into things that might be controversial topic. And Martina, you've heard me bitch about this. I do my research, and one of the things that I will totally, I will totally, you know, toot my own horn about is I am articulate as shit. And when I do my research on a topic, Did you say reticulate or like like he has reticulate? No, articulate. <laughs> I know my shit when I come to topics because I want to do my research and I want to be educated with it. And can I say, let one of my people that read an ARC leak it with screenshots and do something negative and I will own your career. Did my dog shit again? I'm so sorry, but oh my God. I'm trying so hard to be quiet. I'm dying inside. So so is he. I was going to say so is he. Oh man. Oh God. But, How many and, more of these? Oh, <laughs> my eyes are watering. But I think that that was one where somebody should have spun that one is from the angle of the unprofessionalism of the ARC. You can't get an ARC and then leak it and do things like that and blow people up because the point of an ARC is to get the constructive feedback. If right. one of my ARCs was to pull that shit because I make them fill out a form and do all that and agree to shit, I would right. own your right back. The problem is, though, is like when you're dealing with traditionally God published. damn it, it's over here now. Uh-huh. When you're dealing with Trad Pub, like like they send out thousands. Oh, that's right. It was Trad Pub of art, right. and it's a paperback. You know what I mean? Like they're these. This thing was huge on a massive scale. Now, mind you, she does very well. She's written the whole series. It's doing fine, because the nice thing about Twitter is, as quickly as things blow up, they die down. But it's just it's. But on the other hand, why Twitter brought down that fucking douchebag who scammed her way? Into the number one splot, splot, <laughs> the number one splot, uh, well, that's the what number it one, into. yeah, yeah. the number one spot about. on the New York Times bestseller she bought, list. She, she she bought her way in solo through third party means, basically. Yeah, and and when they figured out what was happening, they basically they saw to it that her number one rank was was shot down, and that's good because at the time um, she had knocked out the hate you give which is a fantastic fucking book. And it's a gonna, it was a, supposedly a great movie, which I still want to see. Um, so it's like, don't, don't cheat. And then the worst part of her cheating her way onto the list is that she then doubled down and was like, I cheated my way onto the New York times bestseller list. And for $600, I'll teach you how to do the same. Oh yes, bitch. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I haven't heard from her since, but she did sh- pop up in a few indie groups being like, I'm sure you guys know who I am. I'm the one. And it's not like everybody says, so I want you to be friends with me. Like, so then she was trying to kind of get into the indie world and thinking that she could. And I the don't secret know. circles in the indie world, too. Which is yeah. Fun. Like, she thought she could kind of finagle her way into. Uh, is that even like finagle? finagle. Is that, yeah. But that's not like a slur somehow. No, no, right? finagle, <laughs> it, it, I've, always, I've always understood it and used it as like as like weasel or slither your yeah. way. Finagle your it's, way it's like a Yiddish word, right? Finagle? I don't yeah. know, but they have all sorts of fun ones. Okay. So yeah, she kind of like tried to, I'll say weasel her way into the indie author sphere. And we are a pretty tight knit group, even though there are a lot of us. And most people were not buying her bullshit, but I was actually shocked at how many people took her side. Oh, God. They're dumb. They're not. Yeah. Again, be educated and get the facts for yourself. Even some of the things that we say on here, I encourage you, do not take my word. Yeah. And, There's uh, a reason and, we and, say rarely researched yeah. because mostly we're just either reading off other people's opinions or their articles or just going by my very, yeah. very bad but, but memory. Even, but even there, we still do some research on it and we try to learn both sides of an aspect but I still encourage you not to take all my word as gospel. Never take Zach's word as gospel. No. For anything. Because if you take my all. word as gospel, you're going to hell. Is basically what's going to happen. The gospel of Zach is a dark, dark, dark tome. Yeah. But um, on that one, though, talking about you know authors and things like that, when you're talking about shysty ways of getting on the list. So 
if memory serves, what she did was is she went to third party vendors and discovered that you can make large bulk purchases up to a certain point that will report as sales to these lists, but just under the amounts where, because if it's a bulk, like a distribution purchase, it doesn't count as sales to this list. Well, no, it does count, but there's an asterisk next to the, um, so it'll say like, number one, it'll have her name, and I can't even remember her fucking name, but the book was the Handbook for Mortals, but next to it, it'll have a little asterisk, and when you go down there, it'll basically say like, bulk sales based on, you know, like basically they went and bought 18,000 copies of their own book to distribute to like bookstores or whatever. So you'll get the title sort of, but there's like, and there's, there's a little asterisk but around it. But then the so like, part is, didn't she right. then return so them? What she did was she placed just, she, she called up Barnes & Noble's who are a reporting, she found the reporting stores and she called and she was like, do you report your sales to the New York Times list? And if they said yes, then she would put in a bulk order just under the number that would trigger, I feel like I'm giving people ideas, that would trigger a corporate buy. Well, here's the deal is you're giving people these ideas, but then also know she was caught and this was stripped from her. Yeah. Could they now look for this? Right. But so... She managed to do that all over, and then she got the title, and she never actually purchased any of the books, or never paid for them, I should say, so they were just sort of lingering there. But here's the thing. She didn't care about the title any more than, like, the book was like, if you've ever had to do a report, and you totally phoned it in, so you were just like, I'm very, 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 very sad that this book ended. Like... If you go and you open a book, she has two pages where she described the pink splotch in her fucking hair. She's just phoning it in. She mojo the hell yeah, out of that. Yeah, and here's why. Because what they really wanted was a movie deal. Because she is an actress. And she wanted to star as the lead in the book. Slash movie. <laughs> so she wrote a book about herself. <laughs> made herself Classy. the main character put up an IMDb page and she has all these little um, footholds in the industry because she was a um, band manager for a band that's actually fairly well known. And she um, is friends with the crew from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So they were pushing her books. She claimed that all of the book sales she got was through... um, like the cons that, you know, a Buffy people go through. She claimed that people in the Buffy verse were selling her books for her. And that's why she got these 18,000 sales, which is all bullshit. And it was proven that it was bullshit, which is why the New York times pulled the thing. She still claims to this day that it wasn't bullshit, but it was, but it all had to do with, they wanted it to be a number one New York times bestselling book so that they can put on their movie poster based on the number one New York times selling book. But not only did she steal her title, she stole her cover art. She Oh, I forgot about that. She stole the cover art, and then when she got busted stealing a cover art, first she tried to say that it wasn't, and then she said it was an homage, an homage to, the, uh, to the original artist. Yeah, guess what? Do you know what artists like more than homages? Fucking money for the fucking work they put in. So he threatened to sue as well. And then she sort of scurried off to whatever fucking rock she crawled out of from under and then tried to pop up in the indie world and was quickly squashed there, too. Yeah, we don't forget nor forgive, generally speaking. Um, no. Especially when you do shit like that that makes us all look bad because we have to fight tooth and nail to get what little play we get in the indie world. And we all kind of try to help each other. I yeah. mean, I know there's some some minor beefs here and there, but... Like, when you're indie, a lot of times you got to kind of, like, you, you want to talk about starting from the bottom. <laughs> like, you're definitely starting from the bottom. You don't have $10,000 PR people and, you know, or even $500 PR people. Like, you have nothing. You do all your own marketing. You do all your own design. You do everything. Like, you're building your book from the ground up. And everybody thinks that indie authors, like, oh, they tried to get trad pub, they couldn't, and they just put out their own books. That's not really how it works anymore. A lot of people don't want to take... 10% earnings on a book that was 100% theirs. So people would rather pay, you know, put in the hard work up front and the money up front and retain 85 to 90% of their earnings. It's just a much bigger struggle to get there. But yeah, so that's our, that's our, all of our 
Those are the ones that anybody brought up in the thing, other than apparently there was a cover model, a romance cover model who was fat shaming people. I heard about that one recently. Yeah, don't do that. Don't don't do that. Here's why. Even not just like don't be a dick, but I got to tell you, most writers not going to be on the cover of their own books. Some of them kind of pudgy, myself included. Fat shaming the people who might actually buy your services and slap your ridiculously overly ripped body onto a fucking cover, probably not a good way to make sure that you can fucking feed your family, you douchebag. Wow, Martina, you feel a little strongly about that one. Yeah, I do. I can't stand people who drag other people down, especially when it comes to their fucking looks. You want to drag people down? Do it because they're fucking stupid. Don't do it because yeah, they're fucking that ugly. Yeah, all goddamn yeah. day long. They can't help that they're ugly. They could fucking make themselves less stupid. <laughs> goddamn right. Yeah. So, do you want me to tell everybody where they can follow us? Because since my voice is going. Yes, it is. Was that a yes you want me to, or yes you were just agreeing that my voice is going? Yes. Okay. You can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash books and bullshit podcast, or you can check us out on instagram.com slash books and BS podcast. Right now it's kind of empty, but we are going to be getting some stuff up soon, so you should follow us so you can also laugh along with the shit we post of Zach. Be on the lookout for our Patreon as well. We're actually finalizing that one as a conversation we're going to have after this. So be on the lookout for that. There's going to be some good stuff on there. And uh, yeah, 